Hello everyone. Thanks for joining me again. This is Erin Taylor and this is part four of my talk on discipline. So in the last part, part three, we talked about the concept of the iceberg and how that can help us to have some deep insights into our child's behavior. And today I promised you that I would share with you a simple formula that I came up with that I use with my own children that helps me to use discipline the way it was originally intended, which is to teach. So when my children do something wrong, make a mistake, use poor judgment, hurt someone's feelings, whatever it is they do, the first thing that we do is we talk about what choice they made and what they did. So we look at it and then we look at the consequences of their actions. Did something break? Did they get a bad grade? Did they hurt someone's feelings? Do they have to have a detention at school? Do they, did they hurt their sister when they threw something at her? Whatever. We look at the consequences of the choice that they made. And then we look at what they need to do to rectify the consequences of the choice that they made. So do they have to fix something? Do they have to mend a relationship that they hurt someone's feelings or hurt someone? Do they have to uh, study harder on their test next time? Do they have to talk to the teacher about what might need to be changed or what they can do differently in the future? We look at what they need to do in order to rectify the consequences of their choices. And then we look at and before I go on from that, what do they need to do to rectify the consequences of their behavior? This is where natural consequences come in. They may have to have an uncomfortable conversation with their teacher that they're not really wanting to have. They may need to have an uncomfortable conversation with their parent who they lashed out at or talked back to. They may have to do something to their sister or their brother who they hurt or annoyed or whatever. They may, if they stole something from the store, they may have to go back and talk to the store owner about what they did. They might have to talk to the police. I mean, there's a whole range of mistakes that they can make from little, you know, minor to major. And so whatever it is that they have to do to rectify the consequences of their choices and their actions, that is the consequence. So there's no need for me to add more consequences externally or artificially because they're already probably going to have some discomfort having to fix the mess that they made. So we look at that, what needs to be done, and then we talk about what they can do in the future to not make the same mistake again. What changes they can make, how they can approach a situation, what they can do differently. What can they do to avoid making that same mistake again? And that is pretty much it. That is how we use discipline in our house. We teach. So we accept that our kids are going to mess up. And then when we when they do, we look at how they messed up, what the consequences of the mistake or the mess, what mess was caused by their mistake. And then what do they need to do to fix that mess? And then what can they do moving forward to not make that mistake again and not make that mess again? This simple formula really helps our kids to be more open with us. We've opened the doors of communication because instead of overreacting and flipping out and jumping all over them when they do something wrong and kind of inadvertently 
encouraging them to not talk to us and to hide things from us. Instead, they kind of know that the process isn't necessarily going to be all that pleasant, but it's really also not that bad in the end. And they know that they're going to get some tools that they can use in the future to avoid having to be in this uncomfortable position again. So that is the very simple formula that we use with our kids. And really, we have found it works very, very well. Very well in dealing with the messes, that they, the mistakes that they make. And it works really well in deepening our connection with them and, and nourishing our relationship with them so that they really feel like they can trust us and they can come to us. And we will really do our best to guide them through whatever things come up in their lives. So I would love to hear from you in the comments about what you think about this or if you want to implement this in your home and you're not quite sure and you need a little guidance or help or suggestions with that, I would be happy to talk to you about that. So just drop me a drop me an email or post in the comments below and and we will connect and we'll talk about it. So this wraps up my first series on discipline. I hope that you found some good nuggets of wisdom in here that you can use. And if you ever have any questions about the things I'm talking about, just reach out and contact me and we will talk about it. So until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.